My granny's having her. I believe that's our ring. I don't get long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lon Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, with Mousy Gray's inglorious defeat at the hands of Iron Ike in the carnival boxing match, Lum decided to give up his career as a fight manager and check off the money he spent to experience. He and Abner are now concentrating on their new merchandising plan to promote the bakery. They have baked a silver dollar into one out of every 25 loaves of bread. And today, as we look in on the little community, we find the old fellows getting ready for a big day in their Jotham Down store and bakery. Listen. Here you are. Now, how's that for an impressive sign, Abner? Uh, oh, oh, you got it done already. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's see it, let's see it. Watch out, don't get too close to painting dry yet. Win a prize today. Buy lucky loaf bread. Just ten cents a loaf. All right, doggy, that's a good sign, Long. Yeah. In order to get us a thousand or a hundred customers. Yeah. Might have to enlarge the store before the week's out. I don't know. Lucky loaves. Is that what we're calling the bread with the money in it? Yeah. I studied that up this morning. Well? Had no more and got my eyes all squinted up for a good long spell of thinking when the idea come to me quick as a flash. <laughs> Hi, right, doggy. That sounds good, you know it. Lucky loaves. Oh, how many loaves did you get baked up this morning, Mom? Oh, about 150, I reckon. 150? Yeah. Got the whole room full back there. And there's a silver dollar in one out of every 25 loaves. Wait a minute, wasn't that our ring? I don't know. I never paid no attention Go to Go ahead it. and answer that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. John and Down Store, Library and Pine Ridge Bakery talking. Might change that to Lucky Loaf Bakery. I don't know. Oh, yes, Ms. Monroe. Dollar bread. That wouldn't be bad. That's right, a silver dollar baked right into the bread. Oh, well, no, not never loaf. Well, of course not, for goodness sake. Couldn't afford that. Just ten cents. All right, five loaves. All right, Miss Monroe, we'll deliver them this afternoon. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Did she sure enough say five loaves, Abner? Why, sure. Granny, now I know we'll make a success out of this. <laughs> Neither Ms. Monroe or Tom, either one, ever had bread. And here they are buying five loaves at a time. Sure. I'm afraid we ain't going to be able to keep up with our orders. That's going to be our trouble. Yeah, maybe you oughtn't to put that sign up, Lon, so folk will just sort of forget about... Wait a minute. Who's that? Oh, oh, that's Cedric coming there. Oh, for goodness sakes, I hope he ain't brung along that bird whistle he went as a prize at the carnival the other day. I'm sick and tired of hearing him blow that thing. Well, he's more than likely got it with him. He's even going out in the woods now and blows it at the birds. Well, I don't mind that so much. I wish he'd stay out there and blow it. Yeah. <laughs> Him sitting there in the choir at church and blowing that whistle during the organ solo, so that's going to do for her. Yeah, mind out, mind out. Here he comes. Well, morning, Cedric. Morning, Mr. Abner. Mr. Long. Cedric, we'd rather you didn't blow that whistle in the store. Yeah, we have to keep it quiet in here on account of the library, you know, Cedric. Well, I won't blow it, Mr. Lum. I just come down here to meet old, uh, what's his name? We're, we're going out in the woods and whistle at the birds. He's got himself a bird whistle, too. He has, huh? Yes, Mom. You, you want to hear how much I've improved with mine? No, we don't, Cedric. Yeah, run along and meet your friend, Cedric. We've got a lot of bakery work to do today. Well, I sure have improved. You recollect how the, the metal arc and the whippoorwill both sounded just like the metal arc? I never will forget it. Well, now I've got it to where it's a lot better. Well? Now I can do it so as the metal arc and the whippoorwill both sound like the whippoorwill. Just listen. Cedric, now <laughs> just take that thing and get out of here. Yeah, Cedric, you'll have to leave. That's all they are to it. We're awful busy today. Yes, we are. That, that was the metal arc, I think. Now, here's the whippoorwill. Cedric, now go on home or out in the woods or wherever you're going. You can show us the whistle some other time. Go on now. All right. I'll come back when you ain't so busy. Yeah, that'll be fine. Well, I sure have improved. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Goodbye. Dog, his next thing we know, he'll be trying to grow himself some feathers and sit around in a nest up my tree. <laughs> that boy. Granny's in a 
Mr. Cedric gets himself interested in something, there ain't no one thing that will get him off the subject. Oh, no. I'd sort of planned to give him a steady job delivering these lucky loaves, but I could see there weren't no use even suggesting it. No, oh, no. He he wouldn't even hear it yet. No. We're going to need a ste steady deliver man, though, Abner. I can see that. Well, come on. Let's get this sign nailed up out in front. <clears throat> Paint's just about dry now. Yeah, it ought to be. Just a minute, I'll make sure. Uh oh, oh, no, no, not quite dry For yet, Mom. For goodness sake, now you got it all smeared. Keep your hands off of that. Wait a minute, let me get the phone. Well, I just want to see if it was dry. Hello, jot them down store in Pine Ridge Bakery, Lucky Loaf Eddards talking. Lucky Loaf Eddards? Mom? Why, sure, you've got as good a chance to get a loaf with a dollar in it as anybody else. Changes his name every time we change business. Oh, no, Mom, we can't guarantee you'll get a lucky loaf, but the bread's worth a dime anyway. <laughs> How many? All right, Miss Blevins. Well, we'll get it over there this afternoon. All right, thank you, Mom. Goodbye. <laughs> Granny, did you hear that, Abner? Imagine a penny pincher like Miss Blevins buying three loaves of bread at one time. Oh, they're all going to be buying more bread than they need just so they'll have a better chance of getting one with a dollar in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to be millionaires before you know it. Or thousandaires anyway. Yes, sir. Now, if you'll just stick with this, Lom, and tend to business instead of getting off on something else like you generally do, why, we're going to make some money out of this, you know. I ain't going to get off on nothing else. I've been fooling around trying to find out what I suited for. I grannies, I found out one thing. I'm a natural-born bakery man. I can tell that. That bakery business is in my blood. Well, I'm proud to hear you Wait. say it. Huh? Grannies, I hope he don't come over here. Who? Who? I'll see Gray across the street, yonder. Oh, well, I'll be dog. Hmm. I'm even surprised to see him up. Having a mumps and being knocked out by that fellow who worked the carnival, why, I allowed that to lay him up in bed for a while. Yeah, well, he had no business fighting a feller like Iron Eye anyway. Well, you was the one that talked him into it, Mom. Just trying to win that thousand dollars that they was offering to anybody that could knock Iron Ike out. That's right, I was, but... Why, sure you did. You brought it on him yourself. Well, he ought to have more sense than listen to me. He ain't no fighter. Well... He knocked you out. Well, anybody could... Or uh, Lucky Punch is all that was. Uh-oh. Granny, she's heading over this way. Dad, blame it. Well, now, why don't you just tell him, Mom, that you don't want to have nothing more to do with the box fighting business, that we're in the bakery business here, and you're going to stick with it. I'm going to. Going to. Kind of glad he's coming over now so I can tell him. Why, sure, get it over with, and then we'll take these lucky loaves and make a fortune out of them. Doesn't cost me $110, that box fighting business. That's enough for me. $110? Why, sure. I bought his manager's contract for $100 from Squire Skint, and then I paid $10 entrance fee when he fit Iron Ike. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Look at him strut. <laughs> mm -hmm. Morning, Mousy. Come on in. Morning, Lon. Abner. How are you today, Mousy? Oh, I feel fine. Except I'm mad. Mad? You ought to be happy now that you're over the mumps. Well, I didn't have the mumps after all, Lon. I found out it was just a bad wisdom tooth that was bothering me. Well, what do you mean about then? That iron person. He took unfair advantage of me in that fight, and it just makes me boil. Taking unfair advantage of you. Yes, sir. He hit me first. <laughs> well, natural, he's going to hit you first if he can. You got to spec that in a box fight. That ain't cheating. Yes, sir, but I didn't know that. Nobody told me. You know, I believe they deliberately kept that from me. Oh, I never was in such a rage in my life. Well, it's all over now. I'd just forget about it, Fuzz, you, Mousy. No, it isn't all over either. I'm going to hit him first the next time. The next time? Yes, sir. I found out that that carnival is going to be over at Cherry Hill the end of this week, and I've already challenged Iron Ike. That is, if it's all right with you, Lum. I know, of course, that you have my manager's contract with me, and anything you say, I will do. Well, Mousy, that manager's business, I'll give that up. I'm going to be honest with you, Mousy. You ain't got no business trying to make a prize fighter out of yourself. Little feller like you ain't got a chance of getting the professionals. You're going to fool around here and get yourself hurt. 
No, I'm determined to get your money back for you, Lom, every cent that you put out. Well, now, don't you worry about that. That was my own fault. Let's be sensible about this, Mousy. That Iron Ike's a big, tough, professional fighter. You ain't no match for him. Oh, I just feel sure that I can knock him out. Oh, Mousy, you better give up that idea. No, sir, I'm going to fight him, Lom. And if you don't want to be my manager anymore, why, that's all right, but I'm determined to fight him. I heard the carnival went to Odin when it left here, so I went over there yesterday and went up to the hotel where some of the carnival people were staying, and I did it. Did it? What do you mean? I just walked right up to that Iron Ike and told him that I didn't appreciate him hitting me first the other day, so I just knocked him out, too just to see if I could. And then I told the fellow that runs the carnival that I'd be at Cherry Hill Friday and do it again. You mean you knocked out Iron Ike? Yes, sir. Well, I do know. Well, you dead blame right we'll be there. With me, with me managing you, Mousy, you're a cinch to whip him. Well, wait a minute, Long. What about the bakery business? The prize-fighting business is in my blood. <laughs>